Hi there, welcome back again. This is the second video in the Steinberg Quick Tips video series on the Mix Console. We're going to take a closer look at configuring or customizing the Mix Console to suit our needs. We're also going to take a quick look at a few handy workflow tips which will hopefully save you time. Let's get straight into it. In Cubase, we work with a number of different track types. We can use the menu to the left of the configurations to choose which tracks we want to see and don't want to see. This works really well if we only want to work with a particular type of channel, like audio channels, or group channels, or VCA faders. Perhaps you've just finished tracking and you no longer want to see your input channels, in which case you can turn them off. Speaking of input channels, I'm going up to devices and opening the second mix console. Now there's three mix consoles inside a Cubase, meaning you can have three different views. But my second mix console contains only my input channels. Once again, I can configure the second mix console so it's set up to the view that I want. In the rack menu, I'm turning on the rack views that I think are relevant to recording into Cubase, so things like QSENS and even the hardware panel. If I want to see the hardware panel, I simply click on the tab and then I can resize the level so that everything's in view. Let's go and save this configuration by once again selecting Add Configuration, naming it and hitting OK. We can now switch in between the two different mix configurations that we've just set up and saved. It's really easy. Now that I'm back over in my main mix console, I'm turning on some of the racks that I would want to see during the mixing process. Now that I've added more racks, I'm going to go down and rescale the fader section so that more of my racks are visible. Steinberg have done a great job of fitting an incredible amount of information into such a small space on this mix console. If you need to have a closer look at one track, just go down to the E square above the fader and now you can bring up the channel settings window which allows you to get an overview of everything that's going on and you can edit individual parameters. You can solo, mute, you can monitor an input channel and also you can record enable from the mix console. You can rename a channel by double clicking on the name. The Mix Console allows us to link channels in two different ways. For example, all of my drums are set to Link 1. But let me show you how to Quick Link. So I'm holding down on Shift and selecting a number of tracks, clicking on the Quick Link button, and now anything that I do to one track will affect all of the tracks. I can quickly suspend the Quick Link by holding down Alt on my keypad, and now I can just move that one fader. Alternatively, I can click on the Suspend button. The Quick Link button links everything, but if I go across to the Link Group settings, I can set up a new group and I can choose exactly what I want to link. So I might only want to link EQ or pans or even inserts for that matter. You can turn audio inserts on and off in the rack section by clicking on the individual instrument or bypassing a whole entire section by clicking on the circle to the left. You can also use the buttons at the top to bypass inserts, EQs, channel strips and sends. Now plugins are stored inside of folders in Cubase, which makes it really easy to find. But if you're using a lot of plugins, the search function might make it even easier. You just type in a name and hit enter. You can add a number of different types of channels by right mouse clicking in the fader section on the mix console. You can also add channels to a number of selected channels. So I'm adding an effects channel to my three tambourine tracks. This is a great feature in terms of workflow because it means I don't need to then go up and set up individual sends to the effects channel. 